so let's open After Effects. So I can either go into my folder and just drag in my file, or I can go uh, right click, import file. here so I'm going to drag the image over so this is my project folder so nothing is going to um, happen in my composition here's my timeline so I have to drag my uh, image into my uh, timeline here so I'm going to save my scene uh, before I forget so save as uh, name it as still life compositing 02 Uh, also forgot to mention um, in your uh, comp here you'll see this value here uh, because we exported to 32-bit EXR we want to make sure this is 32 and not 8 or 16 so just make sure that's at 32 okay so uh, right now we see our beauty pass um, there's no information as far as multiple channels uh, so we have to add an effect so that we can control uh, what channels we're seeing. So if I go into effect, uh, 3D channel, go to extractor, I'll get this, uh, you'll see that something just changed, um, that's fine. Um, I want to get this dialog here and if I just click anywhere in this area this little window will pop up and I'll be able to choose what AOV I want selected. So I'm going to have my diffuse uh, layers be my bottom uh, layer. So I'm going to just select diffuse direct. And so you can see it's, it's very dark. It's just showing my diffuse. Um, and I'm just going to rename uh, every layer as I add them. So I'm going to call this diffuse. Uh, this is the direct diffuse, so direct, duplicate that. So when I duplicate it, I'm going to rename it indirect for diffuse indirect. And then in here, uh, I can just click. Um, if it's already open, I can just go in here. And if this is selected, I can just click and change the indirect. Um, let's say this is not open and you're just seeing this. Um, Make sure you don't double click, because if you double click, then just this layer is visible. Um, you'll notice there's two tabs here now. Um, you always want to be on your composition and not on an individual layer. So I'm just going to exit out of this. Don't double click on the layer. Make sure you're always seeing your composition open. So if you're not seeing your effects, you can either go into your drop down effects and double click your extractor, and then this will pop up. Um, there's also a shortcut. Um, if you click your layer and just press E on your keyboard, um, you can just double click your effect that way. So I'm going to select that uh, area again and just change to diffuse indirect. Hit OK. Um, so you can see it's slightly different. Um, so I'm going to keep adding my uh, layers. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to call this spec direct. Change that to specular direct. Okay. Duplicate that. Name it specular indirect. Uh, change it to specular indirect. Um, let's duplicate for our transmission. Select transmission. Um, what else do we have? Uh, subsurface scattering. So I'll call that SSS. Subsurface scattering. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Okay, I think for now that's fine. And I'll add on these uh, ones later, um, but I think that's fine for now. Okay, so right now, um, we're just seeing, oh, I don't need this one for now. 
uh, we're just seeing the individual uh, layers. So if we turn off our subsurface, we're seeing the transmission. So whatever the topmost layer is, that's what we're seeing. Um, so we're just specular indirect, specular direct, um, diffuse indirect, and then diffuse direct. So how do we add these on top of each other? So right here we have our blending modes. So it's just like Photoshop where we have normal, multiply, overlay, screen, all that good stuff. Um, there's a good chance that this is not visible. Um, if this isn't visible, all you have to do is right click um, these that this bar here where all our labels are. So right click that bar, anywhere on this bar. Right click, go to your columns and make sure modes is checked on. So this might be how you're um, seeing it now. So just right click that bar, go to columns, modes. Okay. So um, our bottom lo bottom most layer we want to keep um, on normal. I'm just going to drag this out. Uh, we want to keep on normal and all of these other ones we're going to want to change to add. So for the most part um, we're going to want to change our AOVs um, to add. Okay. So this is a little darker um, than what we're seeing in Maya, right? So it's much brighter in Maya. Um, that's because this is more a um, of an untreated image in After Effects. So we have to correct the gamma. So to correct the gamma, um, I want to create a uh, adjustment layer, and we just go to Layer New Adjustment. I'll call this gamma correction, gamma correct, and I want to apply a exposure effect. So if I go to effect, uh, color correction, go to exposure. Um, so now I have this exposure effect on this layer. I'm just going to change the gamma correction to something like 2.2. I believe that's the... Uh, default in Maya. Um, so this doesn't have to be your final look, but this is just a good base to get it to um, what we expected to come out of Maya. Um, so if we look, pretty similar. Um, so what is left? Um, we have our lights, we have our aim and occlusion, we have our object ID and uh, AOVs. So let's add our lights. So I'm just going to duplicate this and uh, I'll keep it underneath the gamma for now. Um, I'll call this key light. So I'll go into my uh, extractor effect, click this dialog, go to light group one, which is what I assigned to my key. Okay. Um, so, I, so you see, there's, you can see the difference there. Um, so let's duplicate this. I'll call this my fill or HDR, whatever you want. Um, so I'll go to light group two. Should be my fill. Okay. Duplicate this. Um, I'll call this my rim light. Light group three. Oop. Light group three. Okay. Toggle. Very subtle, we can see it um, here. So we're going to probably up this exposure to make it a little more uh, evident. Um, so let's duplicate this for our last light. I'll we'll call this candle light. Light group four. Okay. So again, very uh, subtle difference, but see it there. And this is uh, noisy because I didn't render out in. Um, uh, HD 1080. Um, so, okay. So we have candlelight rim. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. Um, so we. So, with any of these, um, what's it called? Any of these layers, um, especially the ones that we're adding on, like the lights, don't have to be at 100% opacity. So if we go um, to go to our opacity you can either go into our um, click this arrow go into this drop down uh, transform and then you'll see opacity so we can edit it this way um, or 
the shortcut for opacity is just T on the keyboard, and then we can just edit it that way, okay? So we're not stuck uh, with these you know, bright values um, with whatever we're given right when we add these layers. We can mess with the opacity. Uh, we can color correct it, whatever. So I'm just going to turn this a little down, okay? And especially the rim, you know, it's it's not very bright. Maybe I want it a little brighter. So I'm going to add a um, an exposure effect. I'm just going to boost this up a bit. Get something a little brighter, okay? And also, um, with any of these layers, let's say you like how it's looking in one spot of the picture, but maybe you don't want so much... Um, light leaking into this side you can always mask the layer um, either by using the pen tool you can draw a shape you know like that um, so it's just affecting this area or you can create a box um, so if I have my layer selected and I have the shape um, tool or the pen tool I can just draw the area that I want so let's say I want to kind of subtract this area out um, so I'm just going to create a mask maybe around here okay um, and right now we're going to get a sharp edge where this uh, separates so I'm going to make sure that on my mask um, if we don't see our mask the shortcut for mask is M or we can just go into our drop down and we'll see our mask there so masks so right now the feather is zero so there's a very sharp edge here so I'm just gonna make this like 200 or, or something like that or maybe less uh, maybe 50 that's nah, probably still gonna be a little sharp so 150 and maybe I'll um, maybe transform my mask a little you can see what the mask is doing here so this is the value of the light if I change it to none it's much brighter um, so I'm just going to go ahead and translate this. So if I click my mask and control T, I can transform this a bit. So I'm just going to bring this over. Okay, so you can see it's a little pixelated as I move it, but you can see it's a little lighter. Okay, so there we go. And I'll bring it over a little more. Okay. So with our feathered mask, um, it's not as sharp of a transition there. So, all right. So what was I going to do? Okay, ambient occlusion. So you can notice here that all of these um, AOV layers, layers that are on top of our bottom layer, um, are all the add blending mode. But when we create our ambient occlusion um, AOV, we want to multiply it on top. So let's do that now. Let's duplicate this layer and call this AO. And we're going to change the extractor layer to AO. So right now it's add. Um, so we see it's, it's creating some weird effect. Um, so if we change it to multiply and toggle this on and off, you start to see there's much more... Um, definition between our objects um, some nice uh, shadows there um, but again um, we don't have to have it at full opacity so we can toggle this down a little maybe we just want that much and even with a 50% um, still notice the difference okay